I think human progress is uh, technology oriented. We have serious problems and I don't think they can be addressed with a lot of technological razzmatazz. All these tools become experimental ways in which we work together and it's cool that we're doing it. Technology didn't give us more time, it just gave us more things. A special presentation of CTV News. Towards 2000, deciding our future. Brought to you by Xerox, the document company. And now, here is CTV News Chief Anchor and Senior News Editor, Lloyd Robertson. Good evening. Tonight's in the CTV News special. We invite you to come with us as we explore the fascinating and sometimes scary world of high technology. We live in a constant climate of change, change that has reached bewildering levels. And the question on a lot of people's minds is this. Who's in charge here? Are we as a society masters of our own technology? Or has the technology taken on a life of its own? And are the innovations improving the quality of our lives? If not, what can be done about it? Serious questions, certainly, for ourselves and our children. But there is no reason why we can't have fun exploring them. And as we accelerate toward the year 2000, the techies and technophobes we encounter may turn out to be very much like ourselves. When we return, commanding the future or rolling the dice? The lights of Las Vegas beckon fortune seekers and gamblers. Try it one more time, gentlemen. In this fantasy world, nothing seems real except heated action on the tables and the cold reality of losing and winning. Every January, Las Vegas hosts another group of fortune seekers the largest consumer electronics show in the world. A techno bazaar, where merchants peddle the latest, the smallest, the fastest. They make great claims here of the wonder of machines. Ask not what machines can do for you. Ask what you can do for machines. <laughs> I, I think human progress is uh, uh, technology oriented. The stakes are high, selling technology as progress, promising a better life ahead. We don't believe in technology just because it's fun and interesting, but we believe in technology because we think it's going to dramatically change the lives of our children for the better. Do not look upon me as a machine. I am your friend. From the fantasy world of Las Vegas to everyday reality, our world is being redesigned. I hope you never stay. You're satisfied with where you're at. New technology is creating fundamental changes in all aspects of our society. Information technology is at the heart of everything that we produce, which is changing the way. that we play, and even the ways that we think. Geraldine is wearing a silk-lined, slate-gray evening coat over a sleek, burnished silver silk evening gown that makes a shimmering, elegant statement. And on her wrist, Geraldine sports a palm pad computer and a tray sheet pen interface. We have serious problems in the world, and I don't think they uh, uh, can be addressed with a lot of technological razzmatazz. You won't find any of the devices from Las Vegas on Neil Postman's desk. The author of Technopoly and Amusing Ourselves to Death is content with the basics. I need this. This is called a pen. And I need this. This is paper. And uh, it's a complete system. That means the palm pad can give instant mobility to an entire team of people. 
We have to stop celebrating the wonders of technology and take a more mature look to see uh, what its advantages actually are and, and what its disadvantages are. The office is the testing ground for the latest technologies. Twelve years ago, there were 25,000 personal computers in Canadian offices. Today, there are more than three million. And the next wave will transform the workplace again. Because the telephone, the television, and the personal computer are converging, becoming one, speaking the same digital language and flowing along the same information network to your home and office. And if you think of it as a, a pipeline, where in the old days we had a requirement for a fairly small pipe, because we were only shipping voice information around, now suddenly that pipe has gotten massive. There's not only voice information going through, there's information that we traditionally associate with computers. There's information that we associate with the cable TV network. There's information that we associate with uh, CD stereo sound. Hello, folks. How are you today? Here's how convergence of information is working today. If you analyze this conference, they are speaking to each other on video through a phone line, sharing computer-generated data. That's multimedia. And this is the next step. The screen on the wall is a whiteboard or live board, unobtrusive and interactive. You can write up a document and work on it with a colleague in another location, both using electronic ink. Computers don't look like computers anymore because they are becoming multifunctional information tools. And all of those streams of information coming through this pipeline have the opportunity to vastly enrich our lives, but they also have the opportunity to vastly confuse us. Enrich our lives with information or vastly confuse us with information overload. There are ways in which computer technology is making it a better world. And they're few and far between, I think. If this software designer sounds cynical about technology's potential to manage information, it's because he remembers the computer's promise of a paperless office. I think the only terms that make sense now are complexity and simplicity. So can you see me OK, Edward? Yeah, I can see you. Great, thanks. Bill Buxton is trying to simplify the technology. He's the scientific director of a University of Toronto telepresence project. Here, he and his students are configuring a multimedia office so the different technologies are easily accessed and fit in without taking over. Put a telepresence uh, connection. For too long, the tail of technology has been wagging the dog of society, and, and that has to change. In a society of flashing 12s and dangling cables, Buxton says technology is unnecessarily complex. Designers have to reduce the frustration level before converging technologies add to the confusion. I figure we've got two or three years to get a grip on things and change things, or we're in serious trouble. Pen-based computers, which have just been introduced, do simplify computer commands. Among other things, they can read your printing. These are real computer notebooks, personal communicators, or digital assistants. The latest in the move to a portable workplace and the obsession to be ever busy and never out of reach. It's a device targeted for, like, the executive on the go. At Las Vegas, the buzzwords soared, networked, empowered, and, of course, executive on the go. Uh, the one thing you would want to have when you're traveling, so you can do work, call your office, get your emails, send faxes wirelessly. We're talking about a lot of, a lot of very empowering uh, things with this technology. It's information technology. I put a computer on a chip, I put 640K of RAM, so now I'm running DOS 5.0. That makes me totally and completely productive on the road. Creativity will win. Creativity in all areas. Innovation will win. Uh, the pace of innovation is likely to accelerate even, even more. I think we're at the dawn of a truly golden age. 
But a golden age for whom? Even technology's main enthusiasts agree there will be winners and losers, upside and downside. The downside is we're leaving the era when um, a young man or woman uh, can expect to go to work for some company and stay working for that company for the rest of their lives. That's gone. It is estimated that 460,000 Canadian jobs have vanished in the past two years. We talked to some auto workers the day after 1,400 of their co-workers were laid off. The future of this plant? Oh, it'll always be here, probably with half the uh, workforce. Unlike other economic downturns, most laid-off employees are not expected to be rehired when a recovery comes. We're not just in a recession. We're going through a fundamental restructuring of our economy. Don Tapscott is the co-author of the book Paradigm Shift. He argues that the very nature of work is changing. So while installing technology hurts, avoiding it is fatal. We're convinced from our research that organizations that understand this fundamental shift which is occurring have a chance of succeeding in this new volatile business environment. And those that don't are basically toast. Is there a chance that a robot could be doing your job one day? Our jobs? No, that's what we fix. <laughs> yeah, we fix the um, robots. It's not technology which destroys employment, but rather the opposite. If we don't embrace the technology, we will have sustained, structured unemployment. The responsibility is to make sure we understand the social implications of our decisions and, the, of, and how we deploy the technology. Bill Buxton got into technology design through music. He was told electronic music and keyboards would never catch on. Now, as he and his daughter experiment with sounds, he urges others not to complain about future tech, but start deciding their own futures. Get in the firing line. Work with it in art. Work with it in education. Work with it um, in, in your business so that you can find out where the weak points are, but also where the sweet spots are. Work with it, or put it in perspective. Again, Professor Neil Postman. In a culture which has given almost sacred status to technological development, I think we need to ask ourselves whether or not uh, it is through technological innovation that we can reach paradise. We have the ethics of the casino if we simply accept the cards which are dealt us. Canadian business has spent millions of dollars on technology in the past decade. Betting on efficiency in the midst of recession. Gambling on the return to prosperity. The gap between technology's promise and performance will be an epic story towards the year 2000. Later, can stress be made more humane? But next, peeking inside the house of the future. Home is where the heart is. Well, how about home is where the brains are, not our brains, our houses' brains. There are people out there who believe that when we talk to the walls, the walls should talk back. And if you think that's a little weird, wait until you see where home entertainment may be heading. This may become one of the very basic choices to be made as high technology moves increasingly from factory and office to the home. We could be asked not only how many rooms, but how big an IQ do you want your house to have? In a world of artificial intelligence, this is called a smart house. Computer, clear the windows, please. They never succeeded in developing a paperless office, but here, we are assured, is a paperless toilet. Can I have a security report, please? The security system is now disarmed. Thank you. The normal day lighting mood is now set. What a house could do if you wanted to, even using existing technology, is enormous. You could make it a companionable environment. Privacy mode. The blinds are now closed. This smart home thing, well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Andres Duane is an urban planner who prefers safe neighborhoods to smart homes and would rather have friends as companions, not houses. 
Well, this is like a VCR. You know, who, who can program a VCR? A home is going to become a sort of incredibly complex technological thing. It's nothing but a gimmick. Still, today's gimmick may become tomorrow's good idea. To turn on the inside light group, press three. By the year 2000, almost four million Canadians will be 65 years old or older. They may want or need to lean on technology if they can afford it. Actually, I will be very pleased if at that time um, I have a smart house to A, help me survive independently, for independent living, as long as possible, so I'm not a burden on my children or on society, and B, that if something goes wrong, I'm not left with a broken leg down the stairs for, for three weeks before somebody finds me. The Jetsons presented an endearing vision of the future. George Jetson fumbling with far-fetched technology. To me, the future is there are no visible gadgets or buttons. They're integrated into the furniture. They're integrated into the walls, into the architecture, just like our furnace and, and stoves and radiators have disappeared from our living space into the basements, um, and all we have is heat. Integrated technologies may mean mail, newspapers, and magazines could be delivered by computer. Marketer Don Peppers explains. Suppose your mail came electronically, and they give you a video mailbox. Now you come home, you um, uh, turn on your TV, and you have a menu of the messages awaiting you. Some will be personal, a letter from Aunt Millie in video form. Some will be very specific and industrial in nature. Many others will be entertainment. Nobody will be able to reach you except through the video mailbox. That's the future. It's very empowering. What goes up? Must come down, spinning wheel, got to go round. At Las Vegas, the home entertainment area was the biggest attraction. From karaoke singing in your family room to laser active video in your rec room, there was more of an emphasis on escapism than empowerment. Ride a painted pony, let the spinning wheel slide. Escapism or empowerment, which is the thought for the future? The year 2000, it's going to be rotten. Most of, of, of these strike me as uh, essentially distractions uh, from um, uh, people getting down to some serious thinking about what's uh, worth knowing and uh, why is life worth living? No, 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 no. The future is bright. The idea that 10,000 people are playing a game together interests me a lot. Edwin Schlossberg designs interactive communications. The profits are still in business applications, but entertainment, as it's called, is coming to your home. Schlossberg has designed a program where you answer a computerized personality quiz and it designs a suitable workplace for you. A Schlossberg designed museum comes alive with interactive video. He wants people to converse, if not face to face, then through technology. The tools of communication, computers, phones, cellular, all, um, all these tools enable you to talk to a wider group. I mean, how many people do you need to talk to uh, in order to um, understand some sort of problem? Why are we all here? You know, it's like, I don't know. So it's, you know, might as well have some fun. Oh, I see you've made a new friend. Is he your man? I'm her man. Her dead man. Her man. This is an interactive film. The audience guides the plot. What do I do now? And even decides the ending. Who are you talking to? Leslie! You went with her? Don't just sit there. Actually, I, I tell you the truth, I really don't understand why grown-ups would spend their time thinking about that sort of thing. Maybe we should just have the kids develop, uh, develop these new technologies, but when a person reaches the age of, you know, I don't know, 28, 30, say, now let's get serious. 
and stop talking about interactive television as a, a serious solution to anything in the world. In New York, just a few blocks from Neil Postman's office, there's an interactive program of which he actually approves. Young people, artists, experimenting. You can navigate around in the streets below. In one way, with um, describing a space in different ways, and in another way, using a different type of interface with the computer by moving the crisis. An architecture student uses digital video to experience the city's the depth. By lifting up the hotel, um, what you see is the subway below. So what I've tried to do... Red is Burns is in charge of the program. It was elitist when it was only available to a few people, but it's becoming available to more and more people. So this interface here is... Uh, this phone. is empowering. Anybody at home using their, uh, their phone keypad can dial in. The student has an interactive show on Manhattan Cable. From home, you can phone in and select an underground music video. Rather like an interactive home jukebox. And what's going to happen with interactivity is we're going to see very, very different content. Because the content's going to come not through some sieve of a television program producer, but it's going to democratize and come from everywhere. So now I'm, I'm pressing the four button. You can see I'm flying that way. Another school experiment on cable. People at home can manipulate an object on the screen with their telephone keypad. So now just fly it's out primitive, the world, the, the but this is just the beginning. And I'm really excited about the, about the connection of people. Um, the artist, the composer, the writer, the imaginer. Imaginer. This is the world of unencumbered virtual reality, where you seemingly play in computer images. These applications were designed in Toronto. We, we create worlds within a computer that you can interact with. The idea is, is like Alice in Wonderland, where we try to put you through the looking glass. There's a whole world on the other side that's interactive. You stand against a wall, watch the monitor, and react. Coming to your home towards the year 2000. As we work more and develop more, it's going to become much more high-end, much more interactive, much more real, much more 3D. Virtual reality normally involves masks or data gloves, and that allows you to feel that you are actually entering the visual image. It is ideal for architecture and design. You can walk around and experience the room before you build it. VR is used in the space program and simulated action has been adapted to more earthly pursuits. The American bobsled team is training in a room. In Japan, a skier is practicing on a simulated mountain. Virtual reality, feeling you are inside the image, coming to your home in the next century. If you are really brought right into a foreign or alien or exotic environment of some kind or another and allowed to play in it, uh, to touch, to feel, maybe even to smell, to move around, to, to change the environment itself, and to interact with anything in it, it can be, it could be very seductive. And that's why the sex trade has already entered gaming. There you are. Virtual Valerie and other interactive computer images will only become more lifelike with virtual reality. Welcome to McFox's. 
sex and violence. A gun, a television, screen characters who appear to die, and you have a game. <laughs> I got them all. Or you versus an opponent. You fight it out on a screen, and you have an even more violent game. Oh, you got the pipe? With virtual reality, these games will become more real, much more real. And people in the business are starting to worry. It's almost as real as actually murdering somebody, and I think that it's dangerous and it, it's something that um, will have, a, have an effect on people if we're not careful. The serious science of home entertainment. With so many new applications coming to our homes, the question is, who has their hands on the controls? You control it by what you buy. I mean, why don't people understand this? Why don't people understand that if they didn't buy something, it wouldn't appear in a shop? People have to make choices. Later, are schools plugged into the needs of the next century? But next, keeping pace in the new economy. These are the documents that flow through every business. On their way, they get touched by many people. They get edited, copied, distributed. It's a process that's often hard to manage. At Xerox, we help you look at your documents differently so you can manage your business differently. Document Solutions from Xerox, the document company. In business, you can manage your documents or they can manage you. At Xerox, we can show you how to look at your documents differently because each proposal or contract or invoice can make a difference. Helping you get more of this, spend less of this, and enjoy the freedom for some of this. Document Solutions from Xerox, the document company. There are many reasons to question change for the sake of change. One of the best reasons is that if we don't keep questioning, we lose control. One simple test can be applied to each suggested innovation. Will it improve the quality of our lives? There is reason to believe that technology can do that if we make the right choices. But we have had some experience in what can happen if we don't pay attention, don't question, don't make intelligent choices. In the late 1960s, CTV produced a series on the future. Here come the 70s. The age of leisure, so long promised, will bring on a revolution in how we spend our time in the 70s. The choice in the next two decades will include the 22-hour work week, 25 weeks vacation every year, and retirement by age 38, if you want it. Technology freeing us from labor, if we want it. How could we have been so naive? What went wrong? What they failed to understand is that technology does not exist in a vacuum. It exists in the social context. Harvard professor Juliet Shore is the author of The Overworked American, The Unexpected Decline in Leisure. My research shows that the average American worker is now putting in uh, about the equivalent of an additional month more of work than he or she was uh, 20 years ago. Actually, in Canada, over the same time period, our work week has decreased because of more part-time workers. On the other hand, Statistics Canada reports an increasing percentage of people working more than 50 hours a week. Many of us are simply working terribly long hours. We shouldn't have to work as much, but, uh, but we're operating in this very competitive global um, economy. So, so, the, so the pressures are there from employers to, uh, you know, to be very productive, to be very competitive. And, and that's what we're up against. 
We are also up against ourselves, our insatiable appetite for more things. Consuming uh, has become um, almost a moral uh, obligation. When you think of it, in the 1990s, we are more often called consumers than citizens. But it's not a healthy society. If people go too long realizing that their only value to their society is their capacity to consume. We are caught in a cycle. Work, spend, work. We got to really take the bull by the horns and say, what is the, what is the, what is the future that we're trying to get to? Where do we want to be 40 years from now? The problem is that 40 years ago, we didn't do that. And so we ended up today in a situation in which people are feeling overworked, uh, burned out, and beginning also to become jaded. In a time of economic adjustment, there are two contrary pressures facing many Canadians. The burden of overwork and the tragedy of unemployment. Bev Moyer has faced both. I think certainly one of the things that was a real problem is that I had been in a very visible job and it was doing, um, working in an area where there was a lot of change that was needed. And I would say that I was probably 100% committed to the, the role. And so when they all of a sudden tell you, sorry, there's no work for you, it really hurt. She looks back at her time at work now and sighs. People are just so stressed out flat out in their jobs, feeling that they have to cope with the latest technology, feeling that they need this gadget, that gadget. The technology is more important than the people. There's no dichotomy between implementing technology effectively and quality of life. In fact, from my experience, the two tend to go hand in hand. One day a week consultant, Don Tapscott, works from home. Technology, he says, gives him this personal freedom. Driving his children to school, the conversation turns from hockey to technology. Dad, can I get a telephone for my seventh birthday? Can I get a fax machine? <laughs> I'm going to well, we'll sell your phone. There has been a huge emphasis on, on technology and needing to use the latest equipment. I know when I drive down the street, how many cars I see the I mean, they can't even get away from their businesses or their phones. They're just busy coping and hoping that they're not the next person to be laid off. Thank you all for coming this morning. And here's the growth industry for the 1990s. A few minutes is uh, discuss the impact of technological and social change on your work. Are you able? These people have all recently lost their jobs and have sought counseling. In Canada, if we do have a shorter work week, it may be because there are fewer people doing the work in a streamlined economy. There was five people working on a line and you were putting them in cases manually. They got machines to do all that and reduced the number of people lined to two. Well, I think we're seeing accelerated stress. There's no doubt about that. We're seeing uh, from the, uh, the, the slow episodic stress, we're now seeing chronic buildup of stress in response to very rapid changes both in work procedures as well as in how companies think about the work they're doing. The 90s is going to be the pacing uh, decade. How to pace, how to pace yourself, how to pace your business, how to pace your educational system. Elaine, it's Wendy Craig. Hi, Wendy. I wanted to meet with you. Wendy so Craig's lifestyle is a product of technology. She is a telecommuter, not tied to an office, plugged in by computer. Friday looks good. What I've noticed is that I work less time in an average work week now than I did when I was bound to the services of a physical office. Three million Canadians work at home at least some of the time. Telecommuting, whether starting your own home business or working for a large company from home, is a key lifestyle decision of the 90s. Maybe a third of all work will be done at home within a generation. A lot of clerical work could be done at home. I estimate maybe 85% of clerical work could be done at home. Maybe a third to two-thirds of management work could be done at home. If you spend an hour commuting to work, that's almost 12 work weeks a year sitting in a car. 
You take back a lot of your life if you work from home. Or do you? Some people have uh, see telecommuting as moving us from the double day to the endless day. For most people, they're social animals and the social interaction that comes from workplace is really important and it's something that they really miss and it can be really really stressful then to be on your own alone at home quality of life keeping pace and living better we will not dare to project how the balance will tip in the next 40 years <laughs> We are all aware of too many wrong predictions in the past, or wrong decisions. We didn't think 40 years ago about where all this productivity increase and technological change was going to take us. We're not thinking about that today. We are just moving from product to product, always thinking that the next generation is going to be some great thing and it's somehow going to liberate us in some way or make our quality of life better. Isn't there a better way to use our resources? Computers in the schools, the sideshow, or the show. You got a hold on me. Presenting the new Gillette Sensor for Women Razor. You got a hold on me. Its unique handle is easier to hold on to for total control. And its spring-mounted twin blades and pivoting head hold on to every curve for fewer nicks and cuts. So smooth. So silky. The new Gillette Sensor for Women. Finally, a razor worth holding on to. Did I hear you say... He's back. And more outrageous than ever. Night Court's John Larroquette now stars as the night manager of an inner city bus terminal. Tonight I start a new job. Hey, how you doing? But the challenge may be more than he bargained for. If Andy Garcia walked in here right now, I would do him on your desk. The John Larroquette Show, Tuesday on CTV. I didn't always have good hair days. You know, healthy looking, shiny. There were times when it was dry and dull, I admit it. Then I got into Pantene Pro-V Treatment Shampoo Plus Conditioner. It's the only shampoo with Pantene's Pro-Vitamin B5 formula that penetrates deep down, improving your hair, making it healthier looking, and brilliantly shiny. Pantene Pro-V makes your hair look so healthy, it shines. Try it, and you can expect good hair days too. These are the documents that flow through every business. On their way, they get touched by many people. They get edited, copied, distributed. It's a process that's often hard to manage. At Xerox, we help you look at your documents differently so you can manage your business differently. Document Solutions from Xerox, the document company. In many ways, the people best equipped to cope with all of this techno change are children. Because to them, everything is new. They take it for granted and take it over. But access to technology is through computers. And there's a heated debate going on over whether children in schools have enough access to computers. This debate could determine the future direction of our education and of our preparation for the next century. We're definitely in a crisis situation in education. I think society in general is in crisis. We're, we're facing massive restructuring on, on many different levels. We're going to be having a shortage of a, up to 15,000 technically skilled workers by 1995. She catches her breath and slams the mirror. The argument is heard over and over again. We are educating our youth for the former industrial age, not for our high-speed information era. We are preparing them for the past, not the future. The system, the argument goes, is outmoded. It is a system that is not appropriate for today's world and much less appropriate for tomorrow's world. The rest of the world has 
changed the way it's educating its children in a way that has moved it well ahead of us. In response, business has moved into the classroom, and we are getting new equations in the 1990s. Education equals skills. Better education means a better chance at economic prosperity. People have made a very tight connection between our learning systems and our future possibilities as a nation. A quarter of a million jobs during 1992 could not be filled. Even in this recession, employers have been looking overseas for technically trained workers. Industry is deeply concerned. They're the ones with the worker shortages. Naturally, they're concerned. But um, industry has a special motivation. They must achieve profits for their shareholders. Skills equals profits, an uncontested equation in the short term. But in the long term, is that the role of education? Is that the role of educators? All of their energies go into figuring out how to uh, uh, promote skills that are economically useful, and especially useful in acing out the Japanese. Yes, it's our right to pump literally children's heads full of knowledge and skills, but you, the real test is can they take all that and apply it to a real life situation? People do have to make a living, and I, I would say no school, certainly uh, secondary school, can be entirely oblivious to that fact. But I would say education, at least as I see it, is more about making a life than making a living. River Oak School in Oakville, near Toronto, may provide a vision of tomorrow's school. So you now have a file called CTT. Format, document, and you say edit, copy it. Then you go to the new file. High-tech companies have provided technology in all the elementary school's classrooms. Your hypercard stacks are coming along beautifully. Great. The children here use the technologies as education devices. Electronic books, computer pen and paper, the tools of changing times. I think River Oaks is outstanding for one specific reason. They're using technology to teach other subjects. <laughs> The basic challenge of education remains developing individual thinkers who can learn, create, reason, and adapt. The debate is whether to achieve those goals, computers can really make a difference. Something like 35 million people I read someplace have already figured out how to use computers without their being taught this in school. So we actually don't even need the schools to do that. The students, rather than being limited now to maybe pen and paper, um, also have a word processor, desktop publishing, hypercard, video, video disc, CD-ROM, and telecommunications. All the people who invented those technologies that he wants to stuff into the schools, all those people were educated almost exclusively with pen, paper, and book. Now, how did that happen? How did they get that smart? These are the tools that are perfectly normal for the kids. I think maybe for, for us adults, they're, they're not as normal because they're new to us, but for the kids, they're not. And then on to the next It comes part. down to a fundamental question. Can modern technologies be used to teach traditional values? If those technologies become the focus of education, not the sideshow, but the show, then I would say they become a serious problem. To say that our children shouldn't be working with computers when their whole world is populated by computer and computer technology, and in fact young people are extremely comfortable with computer technology, would be to deny the reality of lives of children today. Another cause of business anxiety is that not enough students are taking science and technology courses, and there aren't enough teachers coming to elementary schools with science training. Unfortunately, in our country, we've gone in two different streams. We have math, science, technology, engineering programs, and then we have the arts. 
English, sociology, history, that sort of thing, and never the twain shall meet. And there's the fox in the socks on top. Society may have to focus on the basics in the 1990s, simply because that's all we can afford. Reading, writing, and arithmetic is cheaper than word processing, keyboarding, and calculating. River Oaks is a creature of business donations. School boards can't afford to implement it elsewhere. And that raises the question, will this be the school of the future for the rich? It would literally take tens of billions of dollars for us to equalize that situation and put the same scenario into all schools. Write it down, let us know. Our future is in the hands of our children and their teachers. You could pretend that you're in the theater. The theater, the theater. Oh, the oh, theater. yes, and you are... As we decide what is important to teach inside the school walls and how it should be taught, we really set the agenda for our future. If you can read, if you can write, if you know how to think, if you know how to research, if you, if you know how to find information when you need it, then you'll probably be equipped to deal with whatever comes along down the road. Education, rather than being focused on how do you find things out, ought to be focused on what's worth knowing to begin with. Uh, but that is a non-technical, non-technological question. And uh, computers can't help you address that question. We have a lot of information about what it is that we need in order to compete. We know the skills that we need. The question is, do we have the faith in ourselves, the self-confidence, and the will to make it happen? This is Billy. Oh, and uh, Prince. This is Billy and Kellogg's Crispix. Kids like their friends. Kids also like Crispix. With less than a teaspoon of sugar per serving and no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives, parents like Crispix too. Of all the things your kids like, aren't you glad Crispix is one of them? Crispix from Kellogg's. Fun for kids, fine by moms. Hi. Ooh, I did some number crunching last night. Guess how much of our business comes from out of town? 30%. Try 48. Oh. And I looked at our long distance bill. Oh. Guess what we're spending? Hmm. When did we start saving this much? Since NB Tell looked at our long distance calling and recommended a savings plan months ago. NB Tell presents one less business worry. The cost of long distance. Now you can save up to 50%. Guess how much this bill is? 1450. Right. Gotta go. Long distance business sense from NB Tell. These are first graders reading on a fifth grade level. We could have never done this without Hooked on Phonics. Kipling decided to wait until late the next night when there would be fewer trains. There once was a yellow... Six were easily reading fifth grade level by the end of the nine-month school year. Even the very slowest child in the class graduated reading third grade. Hooked on Phonics. It works. Call 1-800-ABCDEFG. Secretly, I'm feeling stressed. Now please, for designer of the year. But I've got to keep cool and dry. That's a raven. Steve Carley. Steve Carley. Write your speech. Speech. What do I say? Go ahead. Get nervous. Because Secret knows your body chemistry. See what happens when you protect one side with Secret? When the pressure's on, Secret Antiperspirant works harder to help keep you drier. Be cool. Don't let it show. Winner is... Vanessa Raven. My Secret is Secret. Strong enough for a man, made for a woman. Only one gum leads the way when you've got dental work. And that's Free Dent. Free Dent won't stick to most dental work. So you can be confident chewing it. And because it also tastes great, Free Dent's in a class by itself. Free Dent's the one that took the stick out of gum. Regular and sugar free too. Free Dent's the one. Free Dent tastes great. It won't stick while you chew. Free Dent, regular and sugar free. Free Dent's the one. Won't stick, tastes great. One of high technology's buzzwords is empowerment. You've heard that one, I'm sure. The notion behind it is that technology extends the reach and the grasp of each of us as individuals. But like everything else, we have to work at it. 
empowerment won't just fall into our laps. It requires decisions about what's really useful and what supports and enhances our own values. So we end our program tonight, not with predictions, but with observations. And again, an invitation to think about our choices and join in helping to determine our future towards the year 2000. If human progress is measured by the ability to control one's life, then Bill Buxton has got it right. He goes for a morning ride before heading to the lab. I don't like technology intruding, but that doesn't mean I don't like the services that technology can deliver. He seems light years away from technology, but he never leaves it too far behind. He has designed a robotic camera or electronic mirror, which he controls with a transmitter. It helps him improve his riding. And now I would take that tape upstairs. The coach would have a computer with the ability to draw on top of the video and, and annotate it. Technology working with you, not against you. So there's a lot of ways that, that these technologies can ha enhance life, give more access to the humanities, like music in this case for me, and writing and other things, rather than detract. Technology is neither good nor bad, but nor is it neutral. It, it, and it's only design and conscious choice that makes it be one way or the other. We're entering an era where very soon there will be no obstacle, not race, not color, not whether you own a factory or whether your dad has 50,000 acres, nothing, like no obstacle, to the use of your own creativity. The computer creates the illusion, and I worry a lot about this, that the major problems in the world are a result of the fact that we have inadequate information. The fact that there are children starving in Somalia, if crime terrorizes a city, has nothing to do with the fact that we don't have enough information. And yet, whenever you hear people talk about these problems, they somehow convey the uh, sense that if only we had more information, we could resolve some of these problems. But all those problems happen because something else that's missing would be something like spiritual values. And this is why children are starving in Somalia, not because we don't have enough information. Nabisco shredded wheat. It's just good stuff. Hopeless. Virtually hopeless. Will your detergent get them virtually spotless like Cascade's Triple Action Formula? One, Cascade scrubs away even top dried on food. Two, Cascade lifts off stubborn smudges and stains. Three, Cascade's powerful sheeting action rinses residue clean away. Cascade with its Triple Action Formula for sparkling, clean, virtually spotless dishes. Cascade takes dirty dishes. From virtually hopeless to virtually spotless. In the recent J.D. Power & Associates Initial Automobile Quality Study, over 45,000 new vehicle owners in the U.S. were given the opportunity to say what they thought of their recently purchased cars and trucks. Not surprisingly, what the owners of these Toyota vehicles had to say was found to be of the highest quality. Toyota, we're more than just another car or truck. In business, you can manage your documents, or they can manage you. At Xerox, we can show you how to look at your documents differently, because each proposal or contract or invoice can make a difference. Helping you get more of this, spend less of this, and enjoy the freedom for some of this.
Document Solutions from Xerox, the document company. This special presentation of Towards 2000 was brought to you by Xerox, the document company. For a transcript of tonight's program, call 1-800-668-9215. Canada AM. Tomorrow, making your world make sense. This ATV news break is brought to you by Mazda. Good evening, everyone. Rail passengers who were bused to Toronto after a car train collision say they barely felt the deadly impact. Now, the crash killed the six young passengers of the car. The train was traveling eastbound to Toronto through a rural area about 10 kilometers northeast of Stratford when it collided with the car last night. The level crossing was marked only with a sign and had no barriers. More news later. Right now at Mazda, prices are dropping fast with minimum discounts of $1,000 on 323, MX3 Presidium, Mazda Truck, and MX6 Mystere, $1,500 on Protégé, $2,000 on 626 Kronos, as well as the family size MPV, and $4,000 on the luxurious 929 Serenia. We're more and and it just feels right. Introducing new Trident Cherry. ready to make the call, but can Kim Campbell pull off a win? Monday.